What we did wrong is that everyone's growing location is different. That's why I have no problem sharing all my secrets. There's no secrets. There is zero secrets. The secret to you, it's the farmer, right? You can adapt. There is no uh, secret sauce. There's no special ingredient. It's really just your aptitude and whether you want to adapt and overcome. Give me a like, subscribe, a share, comment down below, ask me any questions, and then we can get to the bottom of greenhouse construction and what we did wrong and what we did right. So what we did is we consulted irrigation specialists and other growers in the area. What we did wrong is that everyone's growing location is different. With our greenhouses, we started with a basic design. We wanted to have two anterooms and then one is our main fertigation spot, right? Another part is our bags. We built three meters from the gutter. That is too short for our area because we get hot. And this is one of the big things. If you're doing a truss instead of like a caisson, like a caisson would be nice and round. We're doing like a basic uh, truss. It's too short. You need to be, if you're in someplace warm like Florida or Southeast Asia or Africa or places that where it gets into the 30s and Celsius higher, like 85 plus degrees, it has high humidity. You want to build 5.5 meters from the gutter. You want it even higher on the top. So that's one of the big things we made wrong. So even with our consultants, we still built the wrong size house. Now, is it doable? It's totally doable. We have to find the right seed now. It took me two years to find the right seed. And the seed that we have is a compact one. If you notice, I'm starting to get a little bit bigger plants in greenhouse too, because this is the first time I've ever trialed that variety. So that's another issue that you're going to have is that you have to pick the right seed, the right growing condition, and the right house is that it all comes together and you have to have the right workforce to be able to execute that plan. That's why I said the secret ingredient, it's you. So you can solve your own problems. This has been a really good thing. Now, the maintenance part on this, if you notice, we're already encountering a bunch of mildew and mold on the roof. That's just normal. Uh, you need to pressure wash your greenhouse about two to four times a year. It depends on you. That is probably about 80 to $100 per application in labor and water and gasoline. So that's the other thing. When you do these type of plastic houses, shade houses, you're going to eat a ton of cost on them. So you need to make sure that you're not only factoring in build out costs, you're also factoring in the maintenance costs. Why does it matter that we clean the top of our roof? You need to make sure your plants have 100% sun. If you need to do shade inside the greenhouse, but on top, they need to have ability to have 100% access to the sun. All right, so that's one thing. So you always have to keep clear this. And also the side netting, you can get a lot of mold. Uh, one of the things that we saw a lot of people, we also saw the farmer friends, they use used motor oil right on here and then they bury their post in the ground. We are more OCD and we said we are never letting our poles touch the ground. If you let poles touch the ground, you're gonna have a lot of issues with that. So we dug probably about one meter cube and then we filled it with cement and then we did basic metal uh, truss frames just tacked into there. We did treat all the bamboo with uh, borax. I think I think it's a normal treatment. There might be another type of ways. And then we didn't finish it, but we did treat it. So that's one of the things. But you notice we don't have the issues that a lot of other farmers do when they do their bamboo poles in the ground. Uh, you can kind of see over here. Let's walk over to the nursery. So we did plastic right inside. There. They're still treated. So I'm expecting we probably get about 10 years. So we got eight more years left out of these before it just completely falls apart either due to termites or anything else. You can prolong all that stuff. If you clean your house regularly, you repair it and you do a maintenance. That's the other cost. That's the hidden cost of farming. It's not hidden, it's just you never thought about it because all you cared about was what fertilizers do I use? What pesticide do I use? What fungicides do I use? I wanna make crazy big pepper money, but I didn't think about the actual cost and maintenance of the greenhouse and the upkeep. That's where you had it. Now. We'll counter this. You can build steel. Steel house about this size, 500 square meters with anteroom. This is gonna run you mm, 30 to $35,000. You could do it for less if you just do a shade house. The difference between bamboo and steel is that bamboo requires labor because you have to work it. It's not always the same size. You have a lot of cutting. You need professional carpenters to actually be able to do it and work the material. Where steel, it's already one size. You cut it and then you weld it much easier to weld. That's the issues with steel versus bamboo, which is gonna last longer. Of course, steel is gonna probably last longer. People have been building wood houses and living in Nipah hut and everything for a very long time. As long as you maintain it and upkeep it, it can last very long too. I would say I've seen houses that can last 25 years. That's pretty good. You know, your roof on a house in the US is gonna be about 20 years before you have to replace it or look to replace it, right? And that's the average for a tar roof. 
So you have to think about that. These are all the things you have to think about when you build and construct a greenhouse. Other things, you saw us last week, we had to go out there and buy tie wire. That's just the basic construction of the house itself, which is why you see me testing mini greenhouse over there with no netting, nothing fancy. All the extras that go into it. Now you have to have guide wires. What type of crops are you gonna grow? These are all things that if you go with a professional company, they're already gonna have a cookie cutter idea for you. They're gonna say, all right, you need to do this, this, and this. That's why it's gonna cost you about $35,000 to build a nice shade house. The other thing that happens, if you live in a tropical place like Florida or the Philippines or Southeast Asia or any place that has high winds, you have to make a really calculated cost if a storm comes through because it is infinitely cheaper to cut the roof than it is to let the storm take your greenhouse. Cause I don't know if you see like in the States with garages, once the wind comes through the garage, it takes the entire roof off the house. Same thing happens here. That's why if you notice how our heat exchange, which is why higher is not always better, the higher you go, the more susceptible to wind. If it gets into these little trusts and into there, and then once it's there, it'll circulate and then it'll just rip the roof right off. So that's one of the other things you have to think about. You have to be willing to retract your nets and maybe even forfeit the crop if you have a big storm. We had a, a storm come through, but it didn't affect us too much. But at our other farm location, it did affect it and it ripped everything else. It destroyed the house for the farmers. It destroyed our shade and it wasn't nearly as big as this. It was really tiny. So again, you don't know. We just got lucky that it didn't affect us here. It doesn't affect us here because we're surrounded by mountains, but in, and sometimes you can see it kind of move in. So that's kind of one of the big issues with construction of steel versus a bamboo. If you had infinite money, then I would say steel. I would use whatever material you have and you don't have to do everything all at once. We built this out with one greenhouse and the two greenhouses and the net and then slowly added on to it. So you can reuse your cocoa medium right? It's just a substance, right? People will grow this stuff in rock wool. Rock wool is pretty much like stuff you put on insulation in your house. So it doesn't matter the medium. What matters is the water storage capacity inside of it. So these are other things to think about with the construction of your greenhouse. When we originally started, we had six rows. Six rows was ideal, but as it got bigger, it was tough to work in. So we really thought about that. We have a 10 by 50 greenhouse with two anterooms on each side. Those are our basic designs. However, this house capacity can only do probably about, I mean, mathematically it can probably do about 1800. We only put 1600 in here. And we're gonna go back to my thing. We're gonna lose about 20% of these guys. That's like on average, right? You're gonna have stuff that you can't control. Plants are gonna get sick. No matter what you do to it, you can't control that. You can only just maintain it. So that comes back into construction is that how you build everything and how you design it, you save cost at the beginning to make up on other things. Like I'm gonna spend more on irrigation because to go from this type of irrigation to drip and vice versa was a huge undertaking and huge cost that I don't think I've seen the return on this, but this is what is required in the bag and in the medium. And I'll, I'll talk about that more when I get to irrigation. I'm just kind of walking around to kind of show you that we just did the concrete blocks and you can see that we just braced it. And this has been one of the things, these are really sturdy. I'm not in charge of the construction. I didn't have any part of it. I, I understand what our thought process was. The only issue is, is that we have to factor in trellising. Trellising, the best way to trellis is to have one row, two row, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. right? Cause we went to five, we went to five rows for six because I didn't know what I was doing when I started. Six is the standard because six mathematically fits inside your greenhouse, but it's not the opportune for that. There's so much room to walk down every side of the greenhouse. So you don't have to do that. And plus like, if you can see in your bags, you can just, move your bag. I need more space than just move your plant. That's one of the benefits. We also had to add shade net. Shade net for us, it's 70%. It's overkill because you only need to apply it about three hours a day. When it gets really hot, when it gets in the afternoon, the sun's already setting, you just retract it back out, but you still need it. Some crops, they bolt and they get really elongated. I'll show that in the pepper videos. Not only on construction wise and treatment wise, you also have to figure out how you're gonna grow. That's why the higher the greenhouse, the more chance that the air can be cool and it can be easier to affect the growing conditions. We're lucky because this time of year, it's actually ideal for us to plant the crops that we're planting. And that's what you're gonna learn. That's what I said, you just have to watch my channel. Give me a like, subscribe, a share, comment down below, ask me any questions, follow me, then you can definitely grow anything.